Hello and welcome to The Bike Show. This week, the programme is dominated by new motorcycles. I get to ride in Spain one of the latest, greatest superbikes later in the show. But first, let's take a visit to Intermot, which is in Cologne, Harry, and it is possibly one of the world's biggest motorcycle shows. It is. It's huge. I mean, I, I think they've got about eight halls filled uh, with bikes and, um, and millions of people go, which kind of is a problem in itself because you can't actually get near anything to look at it. Yes, I've been, I've been a couple of times and the crowds are absolutely horrendous. You do need a couple of days there to take full advantage. But like the Amid Expo here, there's lots going on. There's drag races. The Germans love their stunt shows, so there's a lot of that going on. Yeah, lots of activities, lots of crowds, but ultimately, at the end of it all, it's all about the new bikes. Exactly. Now, you don't have to go because we weren't there, but we've drawn together all the new bikes for you in handy little, uh, what should we say, little tasters. A little, uh, little tasters. A I shot like glass style. per bike. A shot glass. Well, how about starting with KTM? Orange, lots of shot glasses involved in that. Now, their big news is what they call the Super Adventure. Now, this is going to use a slightly detuned version of the KTM 1290R's engine, which you may remember is 180 horsepower, mad beast. But they've tamed it down slightly. They're going for 160 horsepower. <laughs> That's, that's practical, Which yeah. is hardly slow, is it? <laughs> but what they're billing it as, you know, KTM hardcore, we make the most ridiculous sport bikes in the world. Well, they, this time, they're billing this as the safest motorcycle on the planet. Even though it's got more power than God. Yes, <laughs> yes, indeed. But it's got more safety aids than God. It's so... got uh, traction control, it, which Bosch has developed in associa association with lean angle sensors. Yes. It's got your cornering ABS. Uh, it's got hill start assist as well, which I'm not quite sure what that is, but it sounds quite good. It probably means you can not roll backwards, but well, hang on, why why not just give it less power so you don't need so many aids to stop you crashing? Because they're... <laughs> oh, you're so logical. <laughs> because they've got to compete with the opposition, haven't they? And what everyone's doing now, slightly later to the game, is they're taking their dual-purpose bikes and making them more road-oriented. So uh, this is like... This is KTM's effort at having a go at Ducati's Multistrada, which is a 150-horsepower engine as well. Yeah, OK, okay enough All of that, day. enough of that. Ducati, finally, finally we get to see the Scrambler. Now, you might remember when we were at World Ducati Week, they didn't actually show it, they just had a whole load of containers. Yes. You know, which was meant to mean not, something, I'm not sure what. It's finally come out now. It's got a 75-horsepower engine. It's an air-cooled motor, isn't it? Air-cooled uh, from the Monster 796, so it's an 800cc. Yeah. Pretty funky looking. It, it uh, sort of mirrors the, the old single-cylinder 450 from the 70s. Yeah. Not bad looking. Quite low seat, which is going to be practical. It's like a third, 790 millimeter seat height. This is height. not bad. Yeah. This is pretty good. So it's accessible to a lot of people. No idea on prices. It looks quite funky, and there are four different models. Yeah, but what's that about? I mean, it's all the same model, and it's just different trinkets just on it. Just different styling and trinkets. Yeah, yeah look, it's just okay. I, it's going to go big in Europe. I don't think. I don't know if it'll go massive yeah. here. Anything else from Ducati, or is that the lot? That was it. Triumph. <laughs> oh, no, they've gone big this oh, year. Oh, they've gone big because... The, in the paint shop. <laughs> We've got a Street Triple RX, which is a Triumph Street Triple with an RX in the name. <laughs> what they've done is taken the standard bike and put the seat unit from the Daytona 675 Sport on there, and I think a belly pan and I think a standard fly screen, and that's it. Oh, well, but don't then. forget the three new Bonneville models. Oh, no, no, I'm models. getting there. I'm oh, getting there because sorry. I'm saving the best for last. Oh, obviously. Three new models of the Bonneville, which um, have got different colour schemes. I think that's it. Anyway, You've got the, well, no, let me tell you, we've got a T214, which is in memory of or in recognition of a British guy, I presume, at the Bonneville Salt Flats, who did 214 miles, what was that, 340 k's an hour or something? Yeah, Bonneville ain't going to be doing that today, let me tell you. <laughs> and there's one called a New Church or something, which is after where Triumph have a big international festival. And there's another one that's called Spirits, which is probably what you will need to drink after you realise you've bought a Bonneville <laughs> with a different colour. <laughs> Well, after that, how do you follow that? I'll tell you how you follow that with the possibly the most exciting bike at Intermot. Yes. The Kawasaki H2R. Yes. The supercharged Kawasaki. Now, this is the closed course version. They haven't released the, uh, the road version. That's coming at Eichma at the end of November. They say that this thing puts out 300 brake horsepower. Right, it's a 1,000 cc... 1,000 cc supercharged engine. Kawasaki have developed the supercharger because they do a lot of that in their industry. 300 brake horsepower. That's absolutely insane. I want to go badly. <laughs> I believe the race version is going to be stupendously expensive. All you hear is rumours, really, but I'm, I'm hearing... 
look, the price was going to be 350, 400 grand. I'm hearing nearer 600 now for the race be, uh, For the race version. But, like, we don't know what the road version is even going to produce. They reckon nearer 200. Nearer 200, which, OK, the delivery of the power is going to be different. Obviously, massive mid-range because of the supercharging. But I have to tell you, um, superbikes normally aspirated these days are producing 200 horsepower. So, so really, I mean, really, why didn't they make a 500cc with a supercharger, which would give it the performance of 1,000cc? That would have been maybe more impressive. But we all know that figures, you know, the barroom bragging, that's what matters. And yeah. it is a gorgeous Fantastic looking, looking thing. thing. Cannot but wait for that. that. Perhaps not surprising with it being Germany, uh, the Cologne show, Intermot show, biggest presence there really was BMW. Yeah. And they had an interesting development. It's not totally unexpected. They've got a naked R version of was using the boxer engine and uh, using exactly the same underpinnings basically as the rs which uh, instead of being completely naked slightly more upright riding position a uh, bit of a bikini fairing looking more towards road practical road usage of motorbikes which is what you want and uh, obviously that wasn't the only thing they showed they did give us a bit of an unveiling of the s1000 double r and uh, it looks like there have been some significant upgrades to that bike but for those details, you'll have to wait until after the ad break when I get a chance to ride it.